Hey guys, welcome back to my second Xmage tutorial video. In this video, we're going to go over just what these buttons are up top, and then we're going to dive into the deck editor, show you how that works, and how to import a deck from the internet. Okay, in our previous video, we got Xmage installed and set up. We got the cards, the card images downloaded. Again, you're going to be missing quite a few cards. Don't worry about it too much. I'll show you in a future video how to get those missing cards. Okay, let me just cancel out of this. Let's go over these. Switch panels. When you have multiple windows open in Xmage, this is how you're going to uh, switch between back and forth. They call them panels. In the preferences tab, uh, we, over, we went in here in images and we changed the default location to save images. Um, in a future video, I will go over the preferences a little bit more. But for right now, let's just go to the sounds tab. Um, I want you to disable the game sounds, you know, if you want. Uh, the default game sounds are super lame, so I just have them unchecked, and I'm going to save and exit, okay? Uh, the next one, the con uh, this one says not connected. This is your status, whether you're connected to a server or not. Uh, we are not connected right now, but otherwise this would say localhost. If you're connected to yourself, you would do that if you wanted to play against the AI. Otherwise, you'll be connected to um, an online server so that you can play with your bros. All right, the next one's going to be the deck editor. We'll dive into that in just a minute. Uh, the next one's the viewer. Open it up. All right, so this is uh, this is just how you view all the cards in the Xmage game. Uh, it's kind of set up like your trade binder. See this tab says Exelon, and then you can scroll through your pages uh, here using these little you know um, dog ear things. You can browse the next sets using here. You'll see it swings over to the other side of the binder. Um, overall, I don't find this really all that helpful. Um, if I want to search for cards, I'm just going to use Scryfall. You can browse by set pretty easily. I mean, if you click on a card, you know it'll show you all the um, prints that it's been in. Um, then you can do other things like, you know, just find out the common. You can see all the multi-language, just everything. Right, Scryfall is great. Uh, and then if you go to the Syntax tab, it'll show you how to search um, for, for very specific things. You can search by color, color identity, card text. I mean, you can get crazy and use regular expressions. It'll show you how to do everything here. You just put the syntax in here, and then it'll pop up for you. Great. So if you want to do search, use Scryfall way better. The only reason I would use this is if you're trying to find a, a missing card image, um, then that might be helpful. Okay. Otherwise, um, you won't be using this much. So now that we have another panel open, you just switch panels to go back and forth between um, all your different windows that are open. Okay. Uh, the main one is called No Title Set. Why? I don't know. They could have given it a title. Um, so let's go back to the Collection Viewer and let's exit. Okay, uh, feedback, this is how you provide bug reports to the developers. The symbols tab we used la uh, last time to download all the tap symbols and mana symbols. You shouldn't have to use this button again unless they release a new symbol in a future set that you need. Uh, the images, we just downloaded all the images so we're good here, but you would use this to add in missing images using custom URL links or if a new set comes out, and you need to get the new cards, right? The about, this gives props to the devs. And then you got your memory here. Uh, we bumped it up to a gig. I found that to be the best um, performance number there. You'll see it turn red, say 95%. Don't worry about it. It'll throttle back and clear up some memory for you. Okay, let's go to the deck editor. All right. So you have your panel here where you can name your deck, save your deck, Load a deck you've already saved. Um, start a new deck. Exit the deck editor. You can import a deck that you've downloaded online. Like say it's just a text file. I'll show you how to do that using MTG Goldfish. You could generate a deck. Um, I think this just uses some parameters and generates a random deck for you. So I don't find it all that useful. And then add land. This is how you're going to add basic lands to your deck. All right, this is the main panel we're going to be using here. This has all the cards here. Um, 
all the cards here, and here's all your filter options up top, okay? You get filter by color, so if you only wanted red cards available, you would uncheck all the other colors, um, and then here are all your red ones left, okay? Um, when the when it's grayed out, it's not visible here. When it's pushed in, they are available for you to browse. Uh, the types option works the same way. Land, creatures, artifacts, sorceries, instants, enchantments, and planeswalkers. Great. This one will filter by sets. I usually just leave it on all, all sets, and then I use this uh, input box here to search for cards by name. Great. See how that works. Um, great. This is the Penny Dreadful option. I believe Penny Dreadful is a format, and if you check this, it will filter cards only legal in that format. You have the Open Booster. This is currently not working. This is free software, so we're going to have some hiccups. Okay. Um, you can also filter by um, rarity, common, uncommon, rare, mythic, and special. I believe special are like promo, like judge foils and things like that. Um, you can view the cards as a list, like it is shown here, or you can view them as card images, um, though you have to have less than 350 cards um, visible. So since I only have one here, it's going to work, but if I clear this and then try to view them as cards, it says it can't be used for more than 350 cards. Honestly, uh, the list view is the most useful, so that's probably just all you'll use. Okay, you can uh, sort cards here using these um, columns, right? You can sort by name, either ascending or descending by clicking on it, cost, same way, ascending, descending, color, type, stats, rarity, set, and card number. Um, you can rearrange these. So if you want to bring the type over here, you just click and drag it. Okay. Great. So that's how you're going to filter through these. Most of the time, I just use the search box and Scryfall or MTG Goldfish. Um, you can find decks um, like the metagame, right? It'll default to the standard metagame. You can find decks here and then just type cards in by name. If you do find a card you want, um, let's say Elspeth Sun. Oh, it's a comma. It's very specific. So if you're missing the comma, it won't find it. Great. So now we have two. You'll see that each set will pop up. So you have the Theros Elspeth here, and then you have the dual deck one here. All you have to do is double click it to add it to your main deck. Alternatively, you can use this button here to add the card to the deck. I just like double clicking. Same thing. You can remove a selected card from the deck by clicking it hit the remove button, or you can just double click it, okay? I prefer just double clicking, it makes more sense to me. Um, and then you can do the same thing for your sideboard. So you can, uh, if you click this and hit add your sideboard, it'll show up over here. This is your main deck, this is your sideboard, okay? Again, you can just double click to uh, remove it. If you wanna add a bunch of them, you can move things all around here stack them, move them into different columns. It'll tell you how many of each card is in each column. Pretty nice. And then you can just drag over to your sideboard if you want. Okay, so that's going to be the basics of how you're going to uh, create your own deck using the deck editor. Um, here is your main deck. It'll tell you how many lands, or sorry, main deck dash one. That means there's one card in our main deck. This right here, zero, zero lands in the deck and zero creatures in the deck. Here are your sort options. You can sort by uh, all kinds of different means. Here, I usually sort by converted mana cost, and then I have this option here checked, that the creatures are in a separate row. Uh, what that'll do is, let's put another creature in here. All right, um, when you put creatures in a separate row, It'll put creatures up top and non-creature spells on the bottom. That's generally how I like to view um, my decks. Okay. Um, 
you can select by, use these options to select cards. So like if you select multiples, it's gonna select all your multiples here. Um, visibility, um, mana analyzer, it'll show you just kind of like mana distribution and such like that. I, uh, I don't really use these too much. Um, I usually just add the cards manually. Um, over here you have the card size option. You have this little slider to make them larger or smaller. Somewhere in the middle is probably where you want to be. Uh, because if you just hover over a card, you'll see this little pop-up. This is the scryfall version of the card in this window. It just has basic text, um, you know, the mana symbol, that. Uh, but if you use your mouse wheel, you'll get the card image. Most of the time I just look at the card image, um, but sometimes it's nice to look at the Xmage version of the card. Okay, great. So now that we know, familiar with the editor, let's grab a deck off the internet. So let's hit new to clear, and I'm gonna clear this so everything pops up here again. Okay, uh, like I said, I'm gonna just go to MTG Goldfish. I really like this website. I'm going to the standard metagame, and it looks like Golgari Midrange is the most popular right now with over a quarter. Okay, I'm just going to click on it. It'll show you all the cards here and how many. There's lots of cool information here. Just check it out on your own. But down here, you have the download option. Okay, just download the deck. I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Okay, um, sorry, I have all these open here. Let's go to my desktop and find the text file. Okay, you see it's very simple. It just shows the quantity and then the card name. And then there's a space where the sideboard starts. If this space were missing like this, all the cards would end up in our main board. And we don't want that. So just make sure that space is there. And so those will show up in the sideboard. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to import since we just downloaded this, as, since it's just a text file off the internet, we need to import it. Right, there we are. I'm gonna open it. All right, there was an error. Problems with the deck, couldn't find the card, find finality at line four. Okay, so line one, two, three, four. Great, find finality. Um, so this, Let's look up the card on Scryfall. Find Finality. All right. Okay, so it's one of these fuse cards that are like two cards in one. And if you hover over the image, you'll see this little pop-up here. It says find slash slash Finality. And that is the issue right here. It only has one slash when it should have two. Just put it in and save it. And let's try it again. So let's do um, you'll see that it's missing those three cards. So let's do a new deck, import it from the file. Let's choose the same file, but we updated it with that extra slash, and great. Now we have our main deck at 60 cards and our sideboard at 15. All the cards are there. Okay, great. So that's how we import the deck. Now, uh, one thing I found, so... I like the way it's sorting right here. I like the rows and the columns, but I think it's uh, sorting find finality as an eight uh, converted mana cost spell when I would sort it as a six converted mana cost spell. Um, you can see that it's not lined up with my Carnage Tyrant. So what you can do is you can just click the card and just drag it into a new column. If you want to drag multiple cards, just click, hold shift, and then you can click as many cards as you want let go and then you can drag them all as one group great now they're all lined up together just the way i like them uh, let's give this deck a name i'm just gonna call it golgari midrange okay and let's save this deck now i recommend you um, find wherever you saved your xmage data you know where all you had all your card images let's create a new folder and let's call it decks Okay, I'm gonna double click it, um, and we can just save it here. Actually, I'm gonna make another folder and call it standard. Double click it, get in there. And then I'm gonna name the file Golgari Midrange. 
I wish the file name would just populate as the deck name, but you know, whatever. Can't have everything. Fantastic. Now, if you actually go look at that deck, um, it's a dot. It's a DCK file. Um, you can double click and open it. If it asks you what you want to view this file, just use your text editor. It's just a text file. It'll tell you the name. This is the name that we named it here. Okay. Now it has a little bit different format than the MTG Goldfish version. Um, it has this one right here, these brackets. This is the set and then the card number. Um, if you wanted to change what set, like for instance, uh, if you wanted to change the swamp, you could change uh, the the set and the card number. If you get these ones right, it'll it'll change the image of the swamp. So here, these swamps are the Guild of Ravnica swamps, specifically card number 262. So anyways, if you wanted to just change it in the text file, it'll update when you import it here. Great. goes down here, and now you have the SB for your sideboard, and then right here, your layout. This is just saving um, how you have it organized here in this window so that every time you open up the deck, it'll open up looking like this. Okay, fantastic. So we saved it. Um, so I think we went over everything. Uh, the only thing we didn't go over is the add land. For instance, if you're cube drafting or doing some other kind of limited draft and then you need to add your basics at the end, you would just uh, use this uh, add land button and then you just add your lands like this. You just choose the number and then you add and it will add it to your main, uh, your main deck. Um, you can suggest lands. Uh, you just put in the deck size if you're trying to build a 40 card deck or a 42 card deck you just hit suggest it'll analyze your main deck and just give you some suggestions uh, it might be helpful if you're not sure what you want to add okay that's how you use that all right great i believe we went over everything uh, in the deck editor you should be have enough tools to use this now we showed you how to go over the filter options you know um, filter by sets and colors. Uh, like I said, most of the time I just use Scryfall or MTG Goldfish or some other website, and then I'll just search for cards um, by name. You don't have to put... Oh, I misspelled it. Imposing. You don't have to put the full card name in. Uh, you can just put partial card names in, uh, but obviously this is going to bring up more options the less uh, the less specific you are. Great. Uh, we went over how to organize your main deck and your sideboard and just card sizes and how to read this. You know, you got 60 cards in your main deck, 24 lands, 23 creatures, and then the rest are your non-land, non-creature cards. Perfect. All right, guys, in our next video, I will show you how to set up a local game against the AI, and we'll go over just how to actually play the game a little bit. All right, thanks for watching.